Hello and welcome to Canberra Diaries. My name is Luscious Leisha, and today I'm interviewing Kitty Peepus. Kitty, welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm doing good, and I must say I love your name. <laughs> Let's just go off off time, right? We have something that was good, you know? So, what are you up to? Well, not like, um, lately I've been writing a lot, so I got a few scripts, getting some stories out. I haven't done this in a long time, but like they say, it's like riding a bike, but for some reason, I'm still on my training wheel. <laughs> so, I know. I'm riding, yeah, right? Like the research part, you don't realize, well, am I going to get factual details? Am I going to do four stuff? Am I going to do, you know, all these different things, options and, and YouTube and with everything going on with the writer's deal, I, just, I mean, you know, the writer's um, strike, it's really been an interesting journey once I made my turn towards writing again, you know, because I used to write back in the day, but um, that's what I'm doing, and I'm sticking to it, and the universe says, you gotta, you gotta get those stories out. Um, that and that's what you do, you know? Right? You get the pen, and you take it out, and you put it down, and wherever you go from there, say la vie, you know what I mean? Like, just get it out there. Well, you got to trust the universe at that point. You really do. Right. I really don't um, know much about you. Um, are you in the camming industry or what do you do? What do you do? Yes, I'm one of those uh, um, Adina high hands, you know, the little finger thing. Basically, uh, I was married for twice for, you know, the good place of my life, did all the mother thing, clear and proper. And my last one ended in revenge porn and divorce. So I didn't really understand the whole, you know, let see me and all this stuff like that. I mean, I did understand. I didn't want to be slut. Now, you know, based on my belief that I was brought up to. But my ex-husband had the courtesy of catapulting me there. So I thought, you know what? If I'm going to be wearing this gun letter and the court think of a bad mom, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to learn all about this and see what's up. You know, and let alone the revenge porn you send. He sent a couple a couple of shots of me doing a quick because I was going to for, uh, fourth wave feminist therapist, and she's like, "Oh, was that some song for pussy?" And I was like, "My pussy, my God, I don't know, you know." Because I was married to a narcissist, and God forbid, I shaved. Like, oh, where are you going? I'm like thinking, where am I going? Like, oh, you know, my housewife. I've got you know so many kids. You got a huge house. You got you know. I was just too busy. So he is all pictures, and girl, that's when that selfies, the phones are coming out, and you know there was cammy and stuff. But I always had a good, sexy voice, so I used to sell my, you know, audio bit to um, guy friends, you know, just low-key, you know, I'm like, okay, okay, I'll say that, come on, just say this, say this, and I go, okay, so, so then I would record it and send it to them, and, you know, give them the tapes or whatever, and then they would pay me. So that was, like, low-key things that I used to do back in the day when I was younger, but then when I got thrown into this, I thought, you know what, I'm a creative artist, I've had dancing and theater all my life was in plays and musicals and then you know becoming a mom you think your life is over you know you gotta live a straight you know straight christian life that's how i was brought so when he did the event porn it opened up like a whole new world that i was thrown into i was ashamed i was outcasted by friends family my career um it was just miserable so instead of um you know dying because at that time revenge porn was a misdemeanor and it became a felony while Ours was still the, through the process of the courts and everything. So, but either way, one day I'd finally get my red card, but now I had a fake card to get met life in marijuana. This is in 2014. And I get all the way home and they didn't give me a pipe. It was a bad mom's pipe. I thought, oh, that's me. I'm going to that place. But I'm a sculptor. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a sculptor and artist. And um, I was thinking, I'm going to make a pipe. They make pipe out of clay because I have sculpting. I was, you know, doing all kinds of, you know, unique things, especially with the kids at that time. They're getting older or whatever. And I thought, what am I going to make? And I thought, I'm going to make a cock pipe because my ex-husband always says I'm sucking cock all day. I'm going to prove him half right. Like, I'm trying to make him my right still. Try to fix him still as an enabler. I'm going to make him half right. And I get gone with the wind of Vivian. I'm like, I will never, you know, starve again. And then I had this eight-inch bleeding hot peak with little symbols and seagulls that, that represented to no, oh my god, and I didn't realize because I was alone in, at my dad's helping this, um, his little mate because they were all going to be moving and he was disabled, so I was doing that at that time. Right. And, um, my girlfriend, you know, I had friends who were in the underground grow, and she came over with a kind flower, 
And so the one up, I'm piping the car. And I go, oh, no big deal. I got mine. I whip out the big AC cock. And she's like, <laughs> and then we're all like, give it to me again. I go, no, no, that's a means to me. You know what I mean? She didn't understand. By the time she got up to 65 bucks, I thought, well, I guess I could buy more clay. And then I started getting cheapas, came to Long Beach, California. They embraced me because, you know, the gay community. I mean, I was making 25 cocks. Um, packages for bridal showers you know that's cool very cool yeah so they embraced me and then i went and did the underground sessions so right now here's a couple pieces i wanted to bring out i have a test set that i've made and i've actually sold one of these already um they're pretty extreme but that's the point like you know like here we got the i call it the hair of bond kind of pieces after the tarot cards too you know because there's a bishop and how they yeah. represent and then of course um, I had one movie for the rooks, but then I go, no, they just a repair. So here's my hair, you know, like part of that. And then, so, I mean, these are pieces I do to help relieve my stress and anxiety because I smoke a lot of weed. <laughs> and I love it. And then here's, here's the female, the queen. Oh, cool. Nice. Yeah. Some guys are mentioning how she didn't get much of an ass compared to the, the king. But, you know, I like ass on men. You know, it's like, we got the kids, they got the ass. So. Yeah, so that's kind of how I went through that. Yeah, so I went to Instagram um, sessions and I, and I met people that I met. A gentleman who was in the adult industry who owned over 300 um, porn names. And I guess he was considered a, a major publishing house. And so I went with him as a um, VP to help sell his uh, his chunk of, um, you know, XYZ porn names. And I um, went to Internet. Which is at that time a few years ago it was like right before um, the ADNs in Vegas. At that time it was the Hard Rock, so that's where I learned about the. I got into the industry through the back door. You know, we all like the back door thing. You know, <laughs> so, yep. and he, he warned me like, you know, they'll be. He was like preparing me because I swear, like I was like not. I was excited, like I wanted to see everything and know everything. You know, I was curious and. And so he goes, be prepared. They're going to be chicks with big boobs. They go, well, I got big boobs. They go, oh, bigger. And they're going to say, I like fucking cock and love being a slut. And I'm like, hey, really? See that? I was like, oh, my God, this is heaven. You know, it sounds ridiculous. But when you're born with this garden letter and you've not done shit, you're like, let me see what I can get into. <laughs> I can imagine that's like, that's like a whole world, you know? Right? It, it really was. I like, literally want to see that song right now. Full new world. What was that from Aladdin? Oh my God! You can tell I'm a mom. <laughs> I'm milk mama. <laughs> oh, no, I, I got in it that way, and 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 so I just reached out since I had the capability. To, I had all these websites that I could put content on, and I didn't really. I was learning about all of that myself, so I reached out to like you know Alana. I met Alana Evans. Reached out to her and and different you know actresses and. And then I started going to the award shows. And then, you know, I just kind of learned. And then my boss goes, you know, we need to know which platforms to support, you know, because they could do the whitewash and all that stuff. So he goes, um, try a few. Try a book. Try a book. I thought, my God. And, you know, it was still shocking. Was like, Yo. But I did it anyway. And I got a lot of followers on that. And what I love about that book, book which is crazy, is I wrote blogs. And they actually respond like you can write a blog on twitter and, and many people you see everybody looks at it but no one responds like it's controversy or they don't want to be associated with that but on flexbook they're like hell yeah give me that body part you know and and i was just thinking man they're really free here that's what i like about that so i have a few blogs on that one but you know it, so i got to do different things and then i tried to only fans because at that time fan central was pretty dominant you know all the main ones you know but, and, and they were barely starting to open up all the cam star ones where you can amateur models like Pornhub. I have Pornhub for traffic. You know, so I kind of got to understand all that through the backstory and, and met people. So my, basically the whole circle came when I went to a gala for, um, it was a gala for uh, to stop cyber abuse because that's when it was crossing over where people are starting to expose the Instagrams and all that stuff with identity information. So um, I met Ron Jeremy there, and I know really? people have, yes, he was sitting in the middle of this place, like with little feet, and someone was donating. Remember when they had all the cooking uh, cupcake contests 
Well, yeah. the other company was supporting, uh, sponsoring. So I had bought a Cosmo, or my boss did, and he was like complaining about how expensive it was because it was Hollywood. And I, yeah. I got a Cosmo and I grabbed a big brandy box of cupcakes and I went and I go, hi, Ron, my name's Kitty. And he was there, he goes, yeah, I love you. He drank the drink and had the cupcakes and he saw him right out and gave him big kiss. But to me, I know people have their ins and outs about him, but to me, he was iconic. Um, I had already met um, Jimmy Hefner through a K-Rock party. It's a local radio station. They did a single thing, and I won, and I got to go there. So, you know, that's when he was dating the blondes, the hot, the hot blondes. Yeah, what was her name? Kendra? Yeah, there was the three of them. There was, like, Holly, Kendra. Well, blondes. So the last one, I can't remember her name, but... Yeah, they, they didn't last, but yeah. Um, so I met Ron Jeremy, and so like that to me was a full circle because he's iconic. You know, he's been doing it since the seventies, and um, we became I befriended him. He befriended me, and the one of the things that I just want to state because we all have good and bad days, or people you know are more extreme than others, and with the Me Too movement, the sexual harassment, I've always been very cautious because. <laughs> I've seen both sides where, you know, the the girl was faking or the girl was, I find out she was lying and it was a, you know, a whole, you know, the whole whatever or not faking and then not being taken serious. So I've seen both sides. So I just, you know, send love and healing, but he always asked for me <laughs> permission because I met him several times after that. We were going to work on a script that I wrote and he was going to be in it. I was like so excited. That's cool concert you know he got incarcerated and whatnot but he always asked me permission and i used to laugh and like why are you always asking permission to, you know touch my boob and you know we're over here hugging and, and he's like because i've been i can imagine i'm about i know it but the interaction that i went had with him was always positive respectful yeah you know the, it is what it is it's the adult industry but one of the things i have to say with that when you cross over the muggle world and the adult it does a different code altogether. You know, I can't, I can't speak behind closed doors because I'm not a major porn actress. I've been offered by some big companies, but I just thought, well, that's not enough money to pay for therapy for my children. That's what, that was my thought. I mean, at least the minimum of this much. Yeah, I'm too. I've been offered a lot of roles, but honestly, like, I don't think so. I really don't think so. No? <laughs> not when you could be your own free agent and you could Exactly. The content, you know, because that's a whole role and, and that's a whole other level that I have respect for myself that people might say, Oh, you look great. I can't believe you did this and that. But in my heart, I'd be like, Uh, uh that's not what I want to look like. And that's the terrible angle. And you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to be that person. You know? And you hate it when it's done. And you're like, Oh, I should have did it myself, you know? I should do my own makeup. I wish it weird things like that. Or, if you need a better filter, you know, because yeah, I should cover the, you know, almost on my face plate. Come on. <laughs> exactly. So you, under, so you understand, especially a lot of the the girls that, like, have come up, they did get an OnlyFans. I did get a fan so you know, I did all those. And the OnlyFans I liked because it was paying at that time the most, 80%. And they wouldn't advertise for you. And I like that because it was kind of scary when you're first getting into the porn thing, like, well, they're going to exploit your name everywhere. Your picture's going to be seen. Like, that's the fear you get so you can obsolete a state. I, you know, people use a lot of hackers are going to find you no matter what. So, yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> what people are talking about. In the weird places where they have, like, you know, are hacking the internet. My shit's been everywhere. You know, I have, we have all the days that I can't talk. I have the DMCA shit, but I mean, you can't stop it. You know, you can't stop no, it. You can't. You kind of have to almost act like you want it to happen, and then you're going to take advantage of the opportunity that it get, the exposure it brings to you. Because if you Google Kitty Pipas, you will find all my shit. And my OnlyFans yeah. has been hacked. I, I had to open twice. I closed it one time, and then I opened it again. And each time, been hacked, and all my photos and everything exposed. And I just, at first, I'm just like, really? And I even yeah. had a company close them down. And then they still open up to another company. I mean, it is what it is. I, 
I'm not crying over it. I'm actually kind of laughing because the more you expose Kitty's pipas, my name is used for a lot of porn companies, and I'll have one little picture in there, and then it has all everybody else, and I love it. I'm like, yes, you my piggy toe, you my, you know, you any piece of me you want, you know, because yeah. I love it. You know, like Andy Warhol said, the biggest form of flattery is imitation. It is, you know, yeah. As as that recognition, as long as they tag you, then I'm good. They don't tag you, then we exactly. You're going down. <laughs> So you said that you did um, foot stuff. Is that what you said? Yes. I Oh, my gosh. I met this lady in Long Beach, and she did footwork. So she told me, oh, my God, I feel so horrible now. I forgot his name. But he's an underground photographer. I can probably send you um, um, his info later. But um, she, I asked her because, you know, she was a sex worker. And I was just very curious because, you know, I, I don't know. I just went hardcore research about learning all these labels that was put upon me and also seeing the travesty of the people being just, you know, no protection for sex work workers. And that's why I really loved Alana because she was, at the time she fought to get one son's benefit and different things were changing at that time. So I was just like fully like, oh my God, I love this. I love this. How I, I was always the anti-bully. But back to the footwork, I, con- I reached out on Facebook to this lady and I love Craigslist. <laughs> and I said, oh, my God, I know you're a sex worker, and I'm not trying to disturb you. And, and you know, I just, I have, I'm kind of like, I just told her, like, I'm kind of like breaking into it, you know, like the, you know, the cam thing. They consider all that sex work. And I go, and I just look kind of curious if I can ask you a few questions, you know what I mean? And then I guess back page, back page was like a big thing. I kind of came into that right when they closed it all. It was like closed, you know, the laws were changing. It was really weird. So, and we take this off personal. So, and so she said, yeah. And so we, we, she befriended me and would answer like silly questions that I would get. Like one guy who said, oh, I'm a cock gold. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? And so that's what I would do. I'm like, what? Who was it? <laughs> what do I have to do? What do I want to do? And you want to what? <laughs> it was crazy. So. I got an ask because you didn't really want to Google things either because you know how like I, I still was kind of that scared stage you know like still so she told me she befriended me and she told me she was a foot so Kitty I think you probably benefit being a foot you know worker or whatever and so she told me this uh, photographer underground team in his town like once a year so often and, and certain girls he would invite and he was a hardcore professional and so I said sure and I was scared to death. I didn't know what I was going to do. And then I saw pictures of the girls with the feet. And I'm like, oh, oh no, I, I'm new at this. So I ain't going to be doing that. <laughs> right, exactly. Because <laughs> I'm thinking, this girl, like, but the photographs, they're not sucking on them. They're just posing. And so when I went there, it was so professional. And we would pose. And then you're standing there like a second, you know, and, and just making the faces. And finally I said, fuck, it's all right. Enjoy this. This is fun. And to the, we faced forward and we had to do the feet in the back or whatever. And I almost fell asleep. And I was thinking, man, this is so relaxing. I, how can I not enjoy doing this? And then I, a couple clients, she posted pictures, he posted the pictures, and I posted a couple. And then I, from that, from I guess some of her followers, one, I got a couple clients saying, oh, I love this. And they are so professional. They, you know, it, it, they pay me for my donation for the time to get there. And, and I really, I had more respect for it. You know what I mean? So, like, I, I got to feel a part that I felt comfortable. Yeah, I was satisfying someone for their thing. At the same time, they were helping me take care of my needs, like paying my bills. You know? Right. Exactly. exactly. That was a wonderful experience. So, you know, I did different types of things, just one on dates and whatnot. I've been kicked off every dating site. <laughs> no, I'm pretty... <laughs> I, I'm... <laughs> Did you make a lot of money? Feet pics? Did you make good money doing that? Because I know when I first started, I looked at that. Because I first started selling panties. I tried the feet thing. No one bought my shit. So I went to the panties. But what did you do with that? Um, I do have a client here or there. I don't advertise it anymore. If someone wants to do it, you know, like, I know how the rules are. I know how it goes. So if they can't set up to that time, like a deposit for your time, you know, because a lot of talk. You know, so you're screening out a lot of people that, you know, just think it's quick, you know, and then they're done. You know, it's like, okay, if you just want a picture, buy a picture. You know, it's like, right. 
What is that? You know, I am now, like, if that's going to be all you want, you don't want to meet, and I don't really want you to meet me because it's kind of weird. Not set up a whole, what, what? You know, it's like the guys that are down and that I notice that, that I work with, they have a place that's safe, completely comfortable. There's no weird vibe. You know, I'm getting a leg, I'm getting a full on foot massage. That's how I look at it. And, you know, I'm facing forward watching TV and having snacks. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> But um, I do have a couple clients, and then I had a couple, uh, one or two guys come up, and they fell all the way through, and they, you know, did the deposit, and then we met up, and it worked out. But you know, it was a little much for them because, you know, I, I, I don't charge the cheapest, but at the same time, it has to be worth my time, you know. Exactly, exactly. and that's a huge thing. Like um, we've been talking about tip menus on you know, campsites. I'm, I'm, me, I'm mostly on Chatterbait, so I've been talking about that with. Uh, the past two episodes that we did and uh people are asking about prices and there's not really like a guide or anything and it's like you have to like let's say you have to price it with your what you feel it's worth and who cares if some asshole comes in and says oh i'm not paying that then there is the door you know go but yeah the worst thing definitely agree with that yeah definitely so have you ever cammed online but out of eight or anything and no that i honestly i i when you said category i have I mean, I we really had Tetherbait on the, on some of the web pages that we did, mm-hmm. um, most definitely because they're, it's amazing. And yeah. um, no, I have not. Um, I have done like a live stream on my OnlyFans. Oh no! Um, how was that? What? How was that? Well, thought that I didn't want. I don't know. Like, I mean, okay, this is dead. quality equipment. Like, it, not my equipment. It was like. So you know how some of the systems that they they offer you really they don't really go with what you have. Like some of them, you better turn on and it's woo, you got all these buttons. And but there's other ones that at the beginning was hard. But what was weird? I'm gonna tell you this. You know, like right after you have like a live stream sometimes, and on OnlyFans, I don't know if it still has it because I haven't done it in a minute. But mm-hmm. as soon as it was done, it showed me the statistics of how many people were watching, and I didn't have that many followers. And I'm thinking, who the hell is watching this shit? And I'm not getting paid. You know, it's like, well, what is up with that? So, like, I don't, that's why I don't even really trust half the stuff. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm a content creator work. I like doing all my crazy stuff, dancing stuff. And then if my chick comes out, my chick comes out. But you can't do like that on a on a regular platform. You get reported. Yeah, yeah, you definitely can't wear watch this off. Back to age thing. So I respect that by all means. So when people send me their fake shots, I go, dude, like, this is a non verification platform. I'm sorry, but if you want to send me the, the you know, cockpits, you got to send it to my OnlyFans. You know what I mean? And they get all bad shape. Or if I say I'm not interested, that I get that old ugly lady. I'm just thinking, really? People are so rude. I know. They really are. Like, there's a lot of assholes out there. I get them all the time in my room because I'm 40 and they're like, you know, you got to retire. I'm like, what? I'm having a good time. I'm not going nowhere. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they say I'm too cold to be on a campsite. That's the thing, though. You're beautiful. There's, there's men out there that just would, that you're their type. You're their fetish. Like, when I came in, they're like, oh, you're, oh, what are you doing? I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. And they're like, no, you're a middle, you're this. And I'm thinking, okay, well, that's what I am. I don't really care. I get that shit all the time. Even the regular radio station, I worked for Dash Radio on the Kylie Girls. I, for years, I, I got a sex talk segment on that. My producer, I worked with him because he was looking for sponsors and I was running uh, Iron Hill Shop in Long Beach. And then I was running um, the customer service and the wholesale management on and the affiliate program for smokerola.com. Uh, in LA and they're an international company for smoking accessories so he can't you know my, one person knew another and then he came to get sponsored and he goes who's running that show and I'm like me he's like yeah you come on work for me and I'm like yeah right dude like another guy telling me what I need to do exactly well the dawn was <laughs> yeah but like he he gave me a, he gave me an opportunity to do a two-minute sex talk segment and honestly I thought who am I Give a sex talk segment. It's like I got thrown into it by revenge. Like I was just like really confused about it, but I, because I was doing so much research, I just started talking about my experience. And then I didn't have broadcasting or you know proper editing or proper writing for it. 
they go so we're trying to you just smoke a lot of pot and listen to the best one when you pray over 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 and if you're laughing hard enough then to the producer and sometimes he'll be like what the hell <laughs> <laughs> but i would tell my honest stories you know what i mean like it happens like I used to say, because I'm totally like, you know, pride, and I say I'm a gay, I, I'm, I say I'm a gay man inside a naturally born woman's body, and I love my shit. And I put that on my many platforms on the dating sites, like, you know, whatever, all, all the day, all of them I've been on them. Yeah, all of it. <laughs> oh, she's transgender. I'm like, hey, you're a discriminant, you know, you're right. You know, I used to think, oh my God, I'm rude. Cares if I am, but I, I am not. If you read what I wrote, it says I'm a gay man in and naturally born. Ah, I know people both are to the extreme. Teach their own, you know. Teach their own. Yeah. You know, we're, you know, nobody should judge anybody. That's how I feel in this world. You don't, you know, nobody should. We're each your own person. If you don't like it, then just go away. You know, that's all you need to do. Bunch of haters, you know, because you know what. I think inside they're probably really sexually attracted and they don't understand why because they've never been up to the possibility that there's a whole other world. And in fact, that's what creates predators. That's what creates people who will hurt people through sexuality. And one of my mo- one of my scripts I'm writing is about, you know, the crimes against creation. And it's horny, you know, and it talks about, you know, a lot of like stuff like that, superhero who fights crime. And, and I know it's a typical thing, but I always, I don't know, life has dealt me where I've been able to walk both paths, the muggle world and the not, you know, the adult world. Yeah. And I would rather work in the adult world because they need secretaries, they need, you know, administration, they need all of that. I met some of the greatest people who worked for these companies, like Chatterbait, when I would work with um, Why Not, I worked um, registering all the, you know, all the stars that come in and so you meet the people who work for the companies and you know how hard, like, it's just like anything else. You know what I mean? It's just like, okay, we're going to summer camp or we're going to Trinity, you know, so, you know, like the, where they go to Florida and they do all their, so it's yeah. like when you keep them together, you got to make sure everybody's safe, make sure everybody shows up, get the wardrobe, do their thing, have fun. <laughs> the stigma, you know, there's a huge stigma with it all. And I, like you saying, I, I was first half of my life I was professional in the muggle do my muggle muggle work work you know and then the second half of my life here I am and I always I've always been super sexual so this was really easy for me um but I didn't know it you know I did not know this world existed but it is the same as a regular job it really is how do you react to people that like this people like probably get you know do does your family they ever ask what you do do they do they know well, like I said, I, when I got thrown into the revenge porn, my ex made it seem like I was a prostitute all day. He told this to everybody, the poor, the, my family, my real, yeah, anyone, and then emailing all this shit through my email. So they're thinking I'm sending these weird photos. But, um, so my, I got, I kind of got disassociated from my family. Like they didn't know how to react during it being a hardcore Christian. And my mom, like before it hit the porch, like my, my parents knew that my ex was just a bad breakup and what what the hell is he doing you know what's that and um but once it hit the court then it became like a battle of it was just a really weird thing so after that um my mom because I was hardcore working in the corporate world I mean I did take a little break and I was very him but um I was getting my real estate career back up in order and it was it was going really good and you know, I've worked in the corporate herb, Orange County. I've done all kinds of international company, ministry assistant, customer service, brand call centers. I know how to do that. So I know how to make good money. But kind of being thrown that way, I, I kind of was, I had an ego death, honestly. And I got hit right in the core of any woman who's a mother and who actually loves their children. I'm not saying mothers to love their children, but some mothers are very selfish, and I know because I have one. And and she was young, granted, she's 17 and she had me. So like I was just another younger sister to her. You know what I mean? Like I'll come on, honey. You know, like always, always, like always, got to find something to do for her or do you know? But she did put me through my class, my dance classes. You know, she did put me through etiquette school. 
Um, she did do a bunch of stuff for me. You know, she loved me the best she could. So when I got hit with the revenge porn, like that was my ego death. Like that was the worst thing that you could ever do to me. And it happened and I survived and, and I figured I'm going to get out of this and become stronger. And, and now I figured seven years have passed and it seems like a long time, but that has been my journey all the way up. Now I'm going to go back to my true love of writing and film directing. And it's not just adults. So that's where I have a couple stories or that borderline, you know, it can go either way hardcore or with same level. But um, I, I don't know. I'm not really worried about it. I'm just going to create it. I already have a bunch of things and I have other stories that I'm working on. So it's just, it's an exciting time for me because now I feel like I've um, been through the cocoon and got, you know, reborn again. And we think more and more. That's, that's what it is. Yeah, it is. And and the best thing about it, you know what I love about the most about me being older is my life experience has built my foundation. And I got lost for a while because I mean, I got thrown in somewhere foreign and had to survive. And then, you know, and then going into working in the underground sessions in LA is hardcore. And I wasn't even ready for that yet because I grew up Orange County, you know, like I was like, oh, you know. I go over there and I was, I felt for every prank, you know, like, okay, whatever. But then I got to work in the music industry. I have a sex talk thing. So I was building it. I, they threw shit at me. I learned to transition that energy and use my pain to create. And yeah, they were caught high and I'd go to down and there's hardcore man dominating. And I'd be like, I want the talk mode. Right. I go, that's Ben. I can uh, kiss an ass in the morning when you wake and bake. And they're like, oh. Oh, <laughs> oh, wow. oh, that's a little cool. Right. And then you realize, oh, I was not just thrown. Not, everybody's not more advanced than me in sexuality. In fact, they're the same as I was before. But the male dominance, but when I exerted my feminine power and had already been humiliated and I owned it, Whoa, I I felt that like what who is who the fuck is this chick? You know what I mean? Like, oh shit, she's a freak. Yeah, your life experience total will just make you into a better person. Like I've had a really rough life myself and uh they make you stronger and you grow from it. And like when you get into the adult industry, it's good to have that behind you because when people come, you know, at you or in your room and you're, and you're online and they're like, you know, you're disgusting, you know, you're so fat. Like, I'm just like, back in the day, that would have really bothered me. Now, not so much. I'm just like, yo, there, there's the fucking door, you know? And, you know, it just makes you stronger. It's you that, think be yourself. You, you understand that they're projecting, you know what I mean? Like, it's a disease, a mental disease illness and in fact you know they say oh yeah well your mental illness for mind to fuck anybody it's like no dude i'm open with my sexuality the the image that you gave me before before i even knew what i was doing like you said i've always been a sexual being i was i i didn't know what not expect i wasn't taught you know i, I really honestly when i was in high school it was really funny i dated this black guy he was really hot you know he was that he was on the track a football player and, and basketball a man he had a beautiful body and one time we started getting a little frisky at my house and all of a sudden he goes to put himself in and like it was like um you're pretty big <laughs> I was like I thought I don't think that, cause I'll be honest with you it's gonna be crazy I didn't want him to fuck me because I didn't I believe that if I married someone else who had a smaller dick my pussy would have been open wide open or yeah, all the time. And the conception with many young women, it really is. But that shit does get back. You know? It's a muscle. You do kegels. I mean, I gave birth to an almost a 10 pound baby boy, and my pussy went back strong. You know, because I learned, like, go up. <laughs> it's a powerful thing. Pussy power, for real. It is. I didn't know that. I mean, if I would have known that, maybe I would have done it with him, but right. we probably wouldn't have to build ourselves up to it. You are a little bear. Like, you. I know. Hey, something before he went in there. Yeah. Yeah. Or I don't know. But the thing is, I felt so bad for him because he goes, I, I'll never forget it. He goes, Oh. And then I go, Oh, I'm sorry. And he goes, 
no, I get that a lot. And I was just like, whoa, you get that a lot? Like, how many girls have you got that? Are to me because what happens they were saying? You know, so I can understand, like, a guy like that wants to go out with the milk, you know? So that brings it full, full circle again, where when I got on the dating site and this guy's like, I don't know, you ever date younger guys? And you know, you're all chatting out on the Friday night, you're at home chatting. I'm like, I get that all the time, all the time. <laughs> And you look at them, they're pretty hot. <laughs> yeah, you can always, I go, oh, I love a good internal massage. You know, it's like she had a good county. Exactly. And he had, his thing, I was like, no, I never thought about it. And he goes, what do you think about it? I'm like, hey, there, son, take it easy. <laughs> I, I reacted like a mom, like, calm down there, son. But it's still, you know, some are serious, some are just seriously just want to fuck you and go, and then the fuck boys are a whole other story, but... Yeah, there's, like, different categories. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. I had one of those, I had one of those, and I must say, I fell for every bit of it, and I loved it until I did it. <laughs> what thing you learn, and that's, like, um, my whole thing is, like, with the industry, like, a lot of young girls, when they're 18, they always say, like, oh, I want to open an OnlyFans, I'm like... <laughs> I don't know if you want to do that, honestly. Like, you need to have some life experience before you get into this shit, because this is not for the week at all. Not for the week. But there's just some girls who have the knack, you know what I mean? Like, I, I love watching interviews, like, with, um, what, what's her name? Like, Kara, she does a lot of interviews for Pornhub. I, 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 just, I just know she loves butt action. And I love her, because she, you know, she married a, 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 a non-adult uh, industry person. And then they have a really nice life. But anyways, I just remember her saying, oh, I love that. I love it. Everyone's seeking me. And I'm going to get, oh, whoa. Okay. Now I, it's like I'm an actor in a method acting and I'm getting prepared to understand. <laughs> but that's what I have to do it so that I can be extreme. So I can, I used to say, you know what? The reason why I learn about this is because now I can actually make a proper consent. You know, I could be consensual to something like, I will know for a fact that I do not want to be double DP because I've only like one, you know, like I'm not ready for that coming out yet. And I even say it like a word that like, oh, big coming out, you her first DP, you know, like there's a reason why they do that, you know what I mean? Or first time lesbian or first time gay or, you know, first time this or, you know, we love that. So I, I learned a, about that from people who were like, Dream, and I appreciate that energy, like a sexual being who is capable of harnessing that energy and just devour. It's a lot of, a lot of energy. Well, it's a lot of, it's a lot of energy that we have. Like I am, um, I'm a practicing, you know, pagan, and I use, I do a lot of sex magic, and it's a lot, like a lot of energy. It really is. It is, but so is the climax too, right? Like when you're building oh, yeah. that stuff up. Yep, and I really. I'm gonna say uh, I'm going for off, offering class, classes for orgas solo orgasmic manifestation. That's my my deal. I'm looking into. Yeah, yeah. Really, that's often. Awesome. I used to own a metaphysical bookstore as well because I, mean, I told you I was a hardcore Christian and I wanted to learn about. And I did. I I um I I had a story in Old Town Test and we I called it um Enchanting Scrolls and Garden. We had a garden with, so I didn't know anything. There is another situation where I, uh, but I willingly went into that one. I wasn't thrown into that, but, um, I learned, I learned the craft and, um, there was many different, um, you know, different, um, divinations of, you know, like the craft coming in, renting a room, we bought the books, we'd have like belly dancing, Tai Chi, we had um, medium meditation where, you know, our week is in a circle. These are all on by specific teachers. Herb classes or authors would come in and they'd have book signing, signing as well as give a class to create like, you know, a little medallion. Or... Well, that's, that's everything I love. I love all that. <laughs> it just, it's good for your soul. Really, it's good for your soul. It is. And that's, that's how kind of through paganism, I you know, Beltane is like when, you know, the sex, you know, Sabbath, you know, when you go and and give a stick pack and go and have sex frolic for a year and then go back oh baby is it oh are we going back to steak or not you know and go get another one <laughs> exactly 
Yeah, it, it definitely does. Like, um, practicing, like, doing, being a pagan and stuff, it does help with a lot of sexual shit. Like, it really does, in a way. I just think it all is together. And it helps me, like, be better. Like, I've always been super sexual. Like, I've always talked about everything. And people look at me and be like, what? You know, like, they, they're like, you don't talk about those kind of things. I'm like, why? <laughs> like, I never understood that growing up. Like, why can't I talk about, like, oh, you know, am I, I got, you know, fucked last night and it was, it was too, like you said, it was too big and it didn't fit. Like, people are like, oh. Well, you know, it's just like a special person, I guess. <laughs> Girl, you need to get yourself a Craigslist um, best friend, ho girlfriend. I, I saw an ad in Craigslist for this guy. He loved going on with Grinder, and he loved getting his butt. You know, like he wanted to fill up his, you know, whatever he was the words he would say. I forgot. It's been a minute, but I go, I'll be your best friend, but I don't have that much activity. But I'm learning to be a ho, and then we right. laugh and he tell me all this crazy stuff. So, yeah, I get it, and then. The thing with, with when back to Peggy is I don't know why I got off the topic that I forgot, but well, I was gonna see you oh yeah, you need a best friend ho. That's what it was. Um best friend ho. <laughs> yeah. It was my best friend ho. I'll write that down. That's what I need. <laughs> best friend ho. Where you just exchange stories. Exchange stories. And my favorite my 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 best friend's gay, so like I love getting stories, but now he's with his boyfriend, so they're a little more boring now, but when all the girls get together, man, we cause ruckus and my kids always end up coming out. You know, <laughs> it's a great time. It's always a good time because, you know, boobies, everybody loves boobies. And oh, what's funny? Right? Who doesn't? It's so funny. Well, I, well, I, like, it's so funny because, like, I'm really open about everything. And one of my friends got a boob job and I was like, she was my house and she's like, how do they look? I'm like, good. And I just, I'm, I'm like, I'm going to touch them. And she's like, why would you do that? I'm like, well, I need to touch these things. Like, I need to feel them. <laughs> I had a friend that go, I got a boob dog. Everybody come touch him. Tell me what you think. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> why would you touch your baby? What come on? And I'm like, I'll be the first. And I go, okay, in a scientific aspect of it, sure. Why not? You know, because that was, you know, like before you really know. So I didn't want to her to start crying because she it's for education before that kids you know you know because you know i got big boobs so she was like oh no what's the boob my boob my parents were like okay i'll fill your boobies i go oh wow they look just like mine i need care i'm like where was she you know so well, exactly that... so you've been like you're kind of like very seasoned like sex worker in the, in the industry you really you've been you've done a lot and now you're kind of like on the back end of it, um, writing a book, which is really cool. Really yeah, cool. different things like that. Exactly. And you know what? I'll always support it and I'm not out of it. I mean, like I'll talk to a couple hotties, you know, some of the good uh, sex actors out there right now. And I'll flirt with them, you know, like, oh, he's my latest crush, you know, like, and it's all cool. You know, it's all, hey, girls, look who's here. You know, it's okay to be funny. You know, and these are the muzzle girls that are like, it, you know who had no PR in Hollywood, or you know, are really hardcore in the in the music industry. Because I still get a little bit of that feedback. Like they're like, oh, but then they realize, oh my God, Kitty is cool. She understands energy. Because that was the other thing I was going to bring about the paganism that I really loved was they taught me. I learned about my energy, and I learned how to protect myself, how to cleanse. It's so key. You know, um, I do that before myself. I, I clear myself before I go on, and as soon as I'm done, I clear that shit because it's the negativity with everywhere. You don't need that in your life, you know. You don't. Exactly, and you know when you say that because when I first got on, like you know, I was nervous, but then I wasn't. Like I felt very comfortable because you cleansed it. If you know what I mean, like, and sometimes I forget to do it, and I think back and then I. This is a little trick I do, and I know a lot of people think this is weird, but how we live in this moment everything is the beginning of time to the end of time and i know that can kind of blow people's minds but if you think that way you know how i say you go back to your inner child and they tell them hey hang in there i love you don't be afraid you got this you got to heal that child yeah i believe you literally alter the energy when you do that moving forward it might not be all of a sudden settle like all of a sudden now you're in a rich house because you dealt with the issues and now you, you know, but no, something changes. And 
I know people think that's crazy, but it's because we, we live right now in this very moment. We never, yesterday's gone and, and tomorrow will never come. You know, the hope will be. But honestly, we live right now. We do in this moment. Yeah. And then when you, when you, when you do your, your classes and whatnot, you know, you already know the importance of that when you come into circle perfectly, perfect class, you know? Exactly. Yep. Yeah. I always like to try to stay in the here and now, you know, just deal with what's here and now and, you know, make the best of it. So any advice that you want to give anybody that's come up in the industry, anything at all, what do you think is the most important thing? One of the most important things I really feel is that, um, getting to know yourself and trust your intuition. And a lot of people, I, I was amazed a lot of people said, intuition, what is that? It's like, it's that gut feeling that tells you, no, stay home. No, don't go there. But you have to kind of know the difference between fear and your intuition. You know, is it, are you making a decision because you're afraid? People have told you to be afraid, you know, or are you using your precaution, your proper judgment? So it does take time to build that, but always go with your gut feeling. And after a while, you get it and then it becomes your discernment and then always love yourself love yourself you know like the adult world you're going to pick up energy so make sure you do your cleansing and you know prayer you know whatever you do you know if you can source or if you you know light a candle always know that you're in control and you manifest your life so you know have fun with it really have fun with it because i was told there's a time frame for a, you know, sex workers, regardless of what it is. You know, you're either the first couple of months to six months, and that's usually the standard, honestly. If you make it to two years, then you become, you know, you become, uh, you know, like skilled or veteran, and not veteran yet. Then when you do five years, then you're a veteran, you're then you're a Hall of Famer. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I'm doing hardcore all the time. So I have a lot of respect and, um, you know, just love one another. In the goppy love or love one another, but have the respect, you know, yeah. for yourself. All you just said is perfect. It's like all of my standards, honestly. Like that's that's great, great advice. I love that. You know, it takes time to get there sometimes too. You know, yeah, it does. It's all learning experience, especially being in the industry. It's just if you're not really open to things. Like I don't think you're gonna last long here. Um, no, <laughs> no, I really don't. <laughs> But yeah, you're saying like the best thing were like two years. Like I just came up with my two years and I'm still here. I'm still doing really well. And, um, you know, the thing that I preach the most is, that. oh, thank you. Because, you know, from that can really beat you up. This, this industry can beat you up. Yes, it's very hard some days, but yeah. So we covered a lot of stuff tonight. I had a really good time talking to you. Is there anything you want to add? No, I just, you know, thank you so much for reaching out and, you know, following through. And uh, my life has been a little crazy, you know, getting used to writing. The new schedule is different than, you know, but um, I'm glad. And, and I was so thankful when you, when you guys pursued and wanted to do this. So I really appreciate it. Or it was great talking to you. And well, when, yes, you too. And I wish you luck with the with the writing. You got this, girl. Yes, you will definitely know about it. I'll send you links. And I'll be like, what ah, in the world? And will be shut <laughs> All right, cool. Well, it was great marking to you. You have a good rest of the day, okay? You too. Good night. Bye bye. All right, guys. That was Kitty Peepas. A little bit different than what we usually do on the podcast. Um, we kind of drove into um, areas that we never talked about. She did give out some good advice. Um, what we'll do is in the show description. We'll put her information, her links, um, also the show notes um, where you can follow us, where you can support us and all that good stuff. So, and that is it tonight. Have a great night. We'll see you soon. Mm-hmm.